I would begin by thanking France and Ecuador for convening this meeting. As is clear from the statements of Western colleagues, which are, by the way, very minimalist, the topic of the alleged Russian strike on the Children's Hospital, for the discussion of which they convened us today, clearly is not a very gratifying topic. And uh, they probably saw the many analyses of what happened uh, on photos and videos which, from which it clearly follows that this was a missile of the Ukrainian air defense. Here you get the magic of uh, verbal gymnastics demonstrated today by Western members of the Security Council trying by any means to protect the Kiev regime. For us, this meeting is an excellent opportunity to tell the truth about what actually happened. However, the truth, as is well known, is not, does not interest our Western colleagues. And in the best tr traditions of the Bucha provocation or with the Mariupol hospital, which was mentioned today, they tried to engage in wishful thinking by condemning the allegedly uh, s intentional strike of the Ru uh, Russian Air Force against the children's medical facilities. Now, the dishonesty of this tactic is clear to the naked eye as was noticed immediately by the Ukrainians themselves, thanks to the video of the strike against uh, the hospital complex, which uh, appeared in the Internet, and negated all attempts by Kiev and Western propagandists. Here are the references of the most full publication. These are QR codes. And here's what... Uh, Im immediately after the event was published by Ukrainian telegram channels, which remain the only uncensored uh, source of information uncensored by the Ukrainian authorities for their uh, compatriots. And I quote, The presidential office has instructed everyone to only publish and promote information related to the children's clinic, Otmandet, in order to A, Divert attention from other issues, as there are interesting sites nearby where people could question the government about why military facilities are located so close to residential areas and hospitals. B. Attempt to boost the morale of the army and the people by fueling hatred toward the enemy. They claim that the enemy intentionally targeted the children, although everyone knows that the rocket was accidentally showed, shot down. This is a quote. Uh, C. Distract the masses from the daily lawlessness of the government, corruption, tariff increases, price hikes, growing disillusionment, etc. D. Divert attention from the constant retreat of the armed forces of Ukraine. E. Create, create additional reason for uh, justifying the conscription in the name of Zelensky. And E create a media hype in the Western press before the NATO summit. End of quote. Here's another quote. Uh, regarding the strike against the Ochmandit uh, uh, children, it's quite clear it was uh, a air defense of uh, NASAMs that went off course and hit the uh, children's corpus. Western uh, uh, air defense also often missed their targets, and most often the... Uh, uh, this was happened when uh, the uh, air defense of the Ukraine hit Poland, uh, hit a tractor. If the X-101 uh, missile had hit the building, the damage would have been much worse. We all constantly write that uh, uh, Ukrainian air defense missiles often go off target. There was many such tragedies before. And the presidential office goes constantly lying to people that these were Russians who intentionally struck residential buildings. The presidential office has to constantly fuel hatred among Ukrainians and uh, justify the continuation of the uh, war by these artificial tragedies. And the military themselves uh, acknowledge such tragedies are as a result of uh, air defense. This is a quote from uh, Ukrainian uh, sources, it's not mine. Colleagues. I hope now you can understand that no matter how the Kiev regime and its Western sponsors tried to uh, uh, represent the tragedy as a result of an intentional Russian strike, even uh, in the eyes of regular Ukrainians, the version does not hold water. In these conditions, uh, we really regret that the Council has been drawn into this uh, dirty uh, propaganda campaign of Kiev and its uh, betters.
And I'd like to ask Mr. Jovner a question. How he, when he uh, went into the street, understood that the, the hospital uh, was subject to a Russian strike? Who provided this kind of information, which uh, clearly uh, uh, contradict common sense? Does he understand that if it w that this if this had been a Russian uh, strike, there would have been nothing left of the r uh, building, and all the uh, children and most of the adults would have been killed and not wounded? But due to the fact that the uh, screen has been darkened, I don't think we'll hear an answer from Mr. Jovnir. We have often stated that Russia does not strike civilian targets in Ukraine. And if you speak, if speaking of uh, strikes of the Russian uh, Air Force, which were conducted against uh, uh, military targets in Ukraine and the uh, air bases of uh, Ukraine, one of these targets is the factory of Artem, one of the largest uh, uh, enterprises of the Ukrainian defense industry. This is one of the main producers of aviation missiles, weapons, and ammunition. And this target, according to uh, data based on objective evaluation and based on testimony of, Kiev, of, of people of Kiev themselves, was hit. Since the factory is about two kilometers from the uh, Okhmandet uh, Children's Hospital, it, there's every po uh, opportunity to assume that uh, the air defense missile uh, was shot it was meant to intercept the russian missile and hit the which was meant to hit the factory now such tragedies could be uh, avoided if the Kiev regime, in contravention of international humanitarian law did not locate air defense and heavy weaponry in residential neighborhoods however its Western sponsors prefer to look away regarding that important fact. We also can't fail to mention the fact that the Ukrainians themselves in the social media noted an interesting trend. The tragedy with the hit of the air defense rocket to, into the hospital, uh, children's hospital, took occurred on the eve of the NATO summit. And this is the third NATO summit since the beginning of the special military operation. And similar situations occurred on the eve of each one of them. It was the same on the 27th of June of 2022 when Ukrainian media reported about an explosion in a mall in the city of Kremenchug in the Poltav Oblast, where supposedly hundreds of people were there. In actuality, the fire in the mall, which was empty and was not functioning, took place as a result of the detonation of uh, uh, ammunition which was held in a neighboring building and was provided by the U.S. and Europe. The same thing happened on the night of the 6th of uh, July of 2023 when the Russian Air Force uh, uh, delivered a strike against a temporary deployment of uh, uh, Ukrainian soldiers and foreign mercenaries in Lvov. And noteworthy that the mayor of Lvov, Mr. Sadovy, uh, acknowledged that uh, the buildings, residential buildings, were damaged by fragments of the air defense. In all these situations, these, uh, these were maximally exploited by the head of the Kiev clique in order to beg for more weapons for Ukraine. It's an interesting tendency, isn't it? And it's quite noteworthy that... Uh, Ukrainian media resources have also uh, noticed this. And by the way, another question begs to be asked. And this is in relation to uh, the words of uh, the representative of Slovenia regarding the confirmed Russian strike against uh, the uh, Otmandet Children's Hospital. In videos posted by Ukrainian users, it's clear to see how one after one after another, without any interference, five rockets of the Russian Air Force uh, uh, strike the factory. Also, it's uh, clearly seen that without any interference, a single uh, rocket uh, hits the uh, Children's Hospital, a rocket of the air defense of Ukraine. It's impossible to mistake it due to the re easily recognizable rocket fin assembly and other uh, traits. How is it possible that Ukrainian air defense misses all five strikes against the uh, uh, factory but uh, hits the children's uh, hospital uh, directly? Maybe the representative of the Kiev regime can answer that question. 
we await also a reaction from Nor Norwegian authorities who it would seem supplied to uh, the assembly NASAMs to the Zelensky regime. Did they authorize it to be used for a strike against the Children's Hospital? And also that it, in contravention of international humanitarian law uh, norms that it would be located in residential neighborhoods. Against that background, in, 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 in line with instructions on how to conduct propaganda, the head of the presidential office, Yermak, had time to make a statement about the impossibility of negotiations with Russia. There's no doubt that the leadership of Ukraine will use today's situation as a pretext for the further uh, ignoring the demands and aspirations of Ukrainian uh, uh, society and of all international society. Uh, for a, uh, an attempt to find a peaceful solution to the crisis. And it's understandable because uh, in such a scenario there will be no need for an emergency military situation and this will require holding elections. And the Kiev clique, which has lost all legitimacy, fears this more than ever, more than anything, acknowledging uh, that the population has a very negative attitude toward it. This is why it prefers to sacrifice tens, if not hundreds of thousands of its own citizens who were sent into a senseless meat grinder. We, on our side, have frequently uh, uh, spoke in favor of beginning negotiations and ending hostilities. However, this must be a cessation rather than a pause in hostilities in order to give key, that which would give the possibility for Kiev to lick its wounds and rearm. Furthermore, the root causes of the Ukrainian crisis must be tackled. Without this, there will not be any sustainable and lasting peace. Our conditions for concluding the conflict were clearly stated by President Putin on the 14th of June at the meeting with the leadership of our foreign mon ministry. We value also initiatives of all states who are aimed at a, a genuine ceasefire and taking into account our legitimate concerns rather than aimed at pr uh, promoting propaganda operations such as a pseudo-peace conference in Switzerland. And as long as Kiev and its sponsors remain deaf to the appeals of uh, using diplomacy, we will continue to be forced to uh, compel Ukraine to peace and eliminate the root causes of the current uh, crisis situation through military means. I will now go back to my role as President of the Council and I give the floor to Ukraine. <clears throat> Well, distinguished members of the Security Council, I would like to thank all of you who have given words of support and expressed your sympathy following yesterday's barbaric attack against Ukrainian civilians, including children. I would also like to thank Acting Under Secretary General Msuya and Mr. Jovnir for their comprehensive briefings, revealing the dreadful outcomes of the Russian missile strike. I'm sorry to recognize the representative of the terrorist Putin's regime in the chair's seat. It has become a tradition for Russia to mark its presidency in the council with heinous war crimes and genocidal endeavors. This time is no exception. And the chair's uh, seat uh, is already soaked with blood. Yesterday, Russia deliberately targeted perhaps the most vulnerable and defenseless group in any society. Children with cancer and other life-threatening illnesses. Even in times of peace, these children face enormous challenges and require specific support and care. It has always been recognized as one of the most touching manifestations of humanity and empathy to donate and help such children, to ensure they get medical treatment and to create joyful moments to alleviate their sufferings. The Ohmadi Children's Hospital in Kiev, the largest medical center treating young patients with cancer and other life-threatening illnesses, has served this goal and helped thousands of children from across Ukraine and abroad. 
The director of the Ahmad Deed has just briefed the council on the unique position of this hospital in the system of medical treatment of children. Yesterday, Russia again showed its repugnant version of empathy toward children by attacking the Ahmad Deed with a KH-101 cruise missile. That is slide one. It's analysis of objective monitoring data on the flight trajectory of the cruise missile on July 8 from 9.40 a.m. to 10.40 a.m. The photo shows the trajectory of the missile from the moment it entered the airspace of Ukraine and the moment it struck the hospital building. The video footage clearly testifies that the Ahmadid hospital was a deliberate target. The footage captured the moment the KH-101 missile dived towards the hospital building. Later, the security service of Ukraine made public the pictures of the remnants of this missile found on the spot. Slide two. During the inspection of the scene, the investigators of the security service of Ukraine and the national police found and examined fragments and parts of the air missile that struck the hospital. According to the preliminary assessment of military specialists, these spe specified objects belong to the parts and components of the KH-101 strategic air-to-ground cruise missile, which is in service with the Russian army and is used by Russian long-range aviation units. The photo on the right below shows the identified fragment of the casing of the KH-101 cruise missile with part of the serial number displayed Slide three, fragment of the KH-101 missile under the rubble of the hospital building, part of the missile body. Slide four, characteristic elements of the KH-101 missile have been identified and examined. The photo on the left shows a fragment of the wing opening mechanism of the KH-101 cruise missile. The photo on the right shows a fragment of the KH-101 cruise missile engine. As a result of the strike, the toxicology ward, where young patients received dialysis, was completely destroyed. Other facilities at the Ahmadid, including surgical, medical diagnostic buildings, trauma, as well as hematology and oncology departments were damaged. Additionally, the Russian missile damaged the nearby Center for Pediatric Cardiology and Car Cardiac Surgery, where three heart surgeries were underway at the moment of the strike. We have just heard the professional assessments of the long-term con consequences for the treatment of hundreds of seriously ill children. These consequences include both physical harm and the stress endured by the patients, as well as the destruction of the medical provision necessary to treat them. Alongside the immediate casualties among the medical personnel and children following the strike, these long-lasting outcomes also constitute a war crime. Even more abhorrent is the fact that the Ahmadid Hospital was just one of many targets in Russia's heavy, heavy missile strike, which hit the cities of Kiev, Krivirich, Dnipro, Slavyansk, Kramatorsk, and Pokrovsk yesterday. According to information from the Defense Forces of Ukraine, the Russian Federation launched 38 missiles, including Kinzhal air ballistic missile, Iskander M ballistic missile, 
Zircon, hypersonic cruise missile, KH-101, KH-22, and caliber cruise missiles, as well as KH-5969 guided aerial missiles. Almost 100 civilian sites were savagely attacked. Medical and educational facilities, residential buildings, business centers. In Krivirich, 11 people were killed following the attack on the administrative building of a local industrial facility. In Kiev, along with the Ahmadid Hospital, the list of targets includes a maternity hospital where nine people were killed and a residential building where the Russian killed seven residents, including four children. Let us not forget that the pains Russia goes to harm Ukrainian children has been a mainstream aspect of the aggression from the very beginning. The children who Russia cannot abduct and brainwash, Russia kills. Let us not forget that Russia is kept on the list of shame for the crimes its armed forces have committed against children. Let us not forget that the person sitting today at the head of the table represents a wanted criminal suspected of crimes against children and subject to arrest under the ICC warrant. At least 47 people were killed and more than 190 were wounded following yesterday's strike. Putin's envoy employed his usual tactics of denying reality and blaming Ukrainian air defense. I recall clear footage of the Russian missile approaching the hospital, the scale of the destruction, and the eyewitness accounts. His comments about the possibility to destroy it entirely if Russia supposedly hit are just monstrous. Our other Russian propagandists, particularly the so-called Z bloggers, have been more open. Z bloggers are administrators of Russian propaganda channels on social media with hundreds of thousands of followers. Given the specifics of their audiences, they, unlike their colleagues from the Russian diplomatic corps, openly explain the rationale behind the Kremlin's bloody actions. One of them, certain Roman Saponkov, openly stated that the strike on the children's hospital in Kyiv would benefit Russia, and I quote, such attacks might even be beneficial because an average Westerner might finally have a thought, damn, the same could have happened to us. And the children's center in Kyiv looks very much like a hospital in Warsaw. Incidents like these might work in our favor." End of quote. They do not even hide that they are deliberately attacking hospitals. That is exactly what Russians regularly did in Syria from 2015. In April 2016, for instance, they attacked the main health care facility for children in the city of Aleppo, killing two dozen civilians. It is also telling that in 2020, Russia withdrew from a voluntary UN arrangement aimed at protecting hospitals and humanitarian aid deliveries in Syria. Now they aim to kill Ukrainian children and also to intimidate the countries which demand Russia com comply with the UN Charter. The attack on a children's hospital is also an indication of Russia's current unwillingness to engage in a peace process. It is not surprising that Russia persists in rapidly tearing apart the concept of a comprehensive, just, and lasting peace based on the UN Charter principles, a concept, I underline, that is at the core of both Ukraine's peace formula and the ANGA resolution ES 11-6 of 2015. 
of February 23, 2023. Russia has rejected its responsibility to adhere to the UN Charter and in fact demands that the international community acknowledge its right to violate international law. However, the attack on the children's hospital is also a manifestation of Russia's deepest contempt for any peace initiatives regardless of their origin. The Kremlin's moral and managerial degradation has reached such an extent that it does not hesitate to commit crimes that undermine the vision for peace of those countries on which Kremlin now entirely depends. Russia is like cancer, only worse. It will stop killing and expanding violence only when it, it is incapable of doing so. It is imperative to shoot down Russian missiles. It is imperative to destroy Russian combat aircraft at their bases. Bold steps must be taken to eliminate any security def deficit. Currently, the UN membership is actively preparing for the summit of the future. We are engaged in active negotiations on the final document with the Declaration on Future Generations as its integral part. The question is, however, what kind of future are we talking about if the murderer feels comfortable sitting knee-deep in children's blood in the chair's seat here? As I said, in this chamber in 2022, these war criminal will end up in hell, bypassing purgatory, and his place there is eternal. What matters, however, is how the will, how he will be put in the dock before that. I can't stomach the thought of how one can shake his hand and accept a lunch with him paid for, for with blood money. It is sickening to think of how, in about a week, his depraved boss, Lavrov, will preside over all of you in this chamber and lecture you on multilateralism. How many more Russian crimes will it take for the issue of the presence of the dictatorial Kremlin regime in the Soviet permanent seat to be addressed? What atrocities must be committed to ensure that the aggressor's veto is disregarded and the Security Council is able to respond to Russia's aggression and war crimes? The international community has the necessary capacities to provide the aggressor with proper answers. Answers in the only language that any aggressor understands, strong, resolute, and united actions to defend the Charter, to stop its violations, and to ensure accountability for all crimes, including those committed yesterday. I thank you. In accordance with the traditions of the Council Presidency, and purely as the President of the Council, I am compelled to thank Ukraine for their statement, and I now give the floor to the head of the delegation of the European Union to the United Nations. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. African politics, economy, and increasing power. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned. Tell us what you think in the comment section. Like and share the video, and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our African videos. It's the best way to support us.